are there, are there other sort of the mythologies about education or schooling that that parents that, that that you run into with parents or just the general public that sort of get in the way of them embracing embark Ooh, yeah we definitely get into that so one of the ones is the accredited diploma uh-huh. <laughs> they want that accredited diploma and so we are a little different than some of the Sudbury schools and the democratic schools and free schools that we don't give the diploma. So people that come to Embark Center are registered as homeschoolers. This is how we can have our program in Virginia. And we don't take attendance too. So that allows people that freedom and to have real true self-directed education here in our state. And so they get a homeschool diploma, which can take you to all of the same places, right? right? And so sometimes I feel like a snake oil salesman when I say that to people with kids that have really struggled. Like, Mm. you know, they've dragged them out of the car, kicking and screaming to get them into the school because that's what the school told them. And I'm like, "Mm, well, you know, here you can create your own transcript and Mm. your diploma doesn't have any regulations on it you just when you feel ready to graduate you're ready and your family issues the diploma we show you how we walk you through the whole thing we help Mm. you write your transcript so we're there every step of the way and the transcripts are my favorite one of my favorite things to do as sort of the admin part, because it's so cool to sit down with somebody and be like, okay, so you've been doing Dungeons and Dragons the whole year. Let's go into chat GPT and just write Dungeons and Dragons English class name and see what we come up with. And it's like character development and plot design. You know, I was just doing this today or mathematics and engineering through video game comparison analogy. You know, it's just like these great things because that's what they're doing and that's what they're passionate about. So that could be, hard for parents sometimes. But the more that we've been refining our message of the democratic youth governance, we're getting more and more people that that's what they're looking for. Mm. We still get people where their child has been through a lot of pain and suffering in school. And those families can be a little harder to, to have this conversation with because what they experienced was so painful. Right, right. And then we're sitting there saying, you don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so sometimes people feel like, well, I wish I had known about this, yeah, you know, yeah. four or five years ago, and then I wouldn't, my child wouldn't have suffered so much. But what we say is we're here right now and let's just go from here. Right. And then another one is if they really are stuck in the, I want the accredited diploma and I really want my kid to go to school or sometimes it's the young person themselves. They have a Mm. fantasy of what they, what they want high school to be in Uh particular. It's usually high school, right? We, we do ask them to reflect on what their reality is Mm. and what their fantasy is. And then just sort of think about those things because that's where the, the, the decision is right. But it's also where that, 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 you know, conflict is within themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's one of them. We definitely get the math question. Yeah. What about math? You know, what about STEM? And uh, I like video games. I'm into video games. I don't play a lot of them anymore, but I used to really play them a lot. And my favorite is uh, just sit with any video game player mm. and watch the math they're doing in their minds super fast because they can't pause their game and be like, oh, let's do this equation of how much health I have and how many hit points I have left. And I have this boss and he's got this and he's got that. And there's no way they're going to do that. Right. So they have to process this super fast. But if I were to say, you know, you're really good at math, they would be like, no, I'm not. I'm terrible. And so I'm like, no, no, no. And then we, we have a lot of people that were really into baking one year, right? And there's, mm. They were baking everything. It was fantastic. It was so many Rice Krispie treats. And so this one young woman was like, well, I'm terrible at math and I hate math and I have all these feelings about math. But if you were to, to Andrea actually did this. So she wrote down the equation of what this person did when she made the recipe all in one third. Mm. You know, and she's like, oh, hey, look at this equation. Do you think you could do this? And she was like, no, this is horrible. And she's like, so you just did it <laughs> right, with right. the brownies or you're doing it with the quilt you're making or you're doing it with the shelf you're making. So that that math is is really there. I, I mean, I'm a musician, too. And so we had somebody one year that he was like, well, I really, you know, I, I'm not good at math. And I'm like, you're a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> you live math. Math is in your body. <laughs> 
and then if people want more math, they can get it, right? And so we we do have people that'll say, you know what, I have this goal I want to get to, and now I do need some math to get there, right? Mm -hmm. And so staff's there to help them. Other members are there to help them, help them get those math skills, and they can because they're ready right? They want it. So they might not be super excited about algebra, but they're super excited about being a veterinary technician. Right. Right. So they're willing to do it. Then they have that internal motivation, right? That self-determination theory. Mm -hmm. And so they have the internal motivation to do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely math is, is one of the big ones. And what I like to say to people is that I don't, you know, I was one of those people that felt really bad about math. Like I was terrible mm -hmm. at it, but it wasn't that I hated math. I felt shame about right. math, right? I felt a deep sense of shame and embarrassment and fear because when I went through school, I was one of those kids that was being pushed further, right? Or I couldn't do the timed multiplication test when I was 11. So I missed recess almost for an entire year until I could get that test going, right? So then it was, I'm bad and I'm terrible at math, but then it was, I'm bad and I'm terrible as a person, mm -hmm. right? Instead of it just being, oh, well, you know, maybe the times multiplication test isn't your thing, right? right. Go catch a snake <laughs> you know, yeah. instead. Yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.